Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing quotient rings. This video is going to be a short one uh, just to look at uh, two examples of quotient rings that you can always construct for any ring. Okay, so the two ideals that we're going to use to form these quotient rings are the zero ideal and the unit ideal. So we're going to look at, for an arbitrary commutative ring, capital R, what happens if you quotient out by the zero ideal and what happens if you quotient out by the unit ideal. Okay, uh, so just to remind you, the zero ideal, remember, is the principal ideal generated by zero, and it's the ideal that just contains the additive identity of your ring. Whereas the unit ideal, which is the principal ideal generated by one, uh, that will contain absolutely every single element of the ring because it will have to contain all multiples of one and of course when you go through all the entire ring and multiply every single element of the ring by one you overall get every single element of the ring back again okay so these are always ideals in any commutative ring okay so the zero ideal and the unit ideal ideals that you can find in any commutative ring ergo uh, we can form the quotient ring of an arbitrary commutative ring by the zero ideal and by the unit unit ideal. Now let's just discuss what you'll end up with. So let's start with the zero ideal here. So let's say that this box is representing the ring. Okay, so I'll start off by colouring it in. And so here is the entire ring represented in orange here. Now, what will the zero ideal look like in this ring? Well, it's just going to be the subset that contains a single element, and that single element is the additive identity. So here is my zero ideal, just a subset that contains a single element, and that's the additive identity of my ring. Now, if I want to quotient this ring R out by the zero ideal, what I need to do is partition my ring firstly up into the cosets of this zero ideal here. Okay, now what are the cosets of the zero ideal going to look, at, look like? What's the partition here going to actually look like? Well, just to get some intuition for this, let's imagine taking the uh, left coset of the zero ideal under the element little a, some arbitrary element of the ring. Well, what we do to construct that is we take little a here and we add it to every single element of the ideal and get all of the answers, and that set of answers will be our subset that's going to form this coset. But in this case, there's only one element of the ideal, and that's the additive identity. So we only have to do a plus the additive identity, and of course a plus the additive identity is just a. So this coset of the zero ideal under the element a is the subset that just contains the element a here. Okay, and that's arbitrary now. A was no element in particular. All I assumed was that it wasn't the additive identity that was implicitly, um, I didn't state that explicitly, but in the picture it's obvious that that's the case. So in fact every single element uh, in the ring uh, is going to be in a coset on its own. So this is what this is going to do. We're going to partition up the ring into these cosets that are really small. They just contain a single element. Okay, so let's say this is the coset containing the element B, this is the coset containing the element C, this is the coset containing the element D. So the cosets we're going to partition the ring up into are just going to be cosets containing single elements. Okay, now, if we consider how addition and multiplication of cosets is going to work then in our quotient group here, well, if I say want to add the coset containing A to the coset containing B, so if I want to add A bar to B bar in my quotient ring, so I'll stick with my notation and colour this in red here, so if I want to add the coset containing A to the coset containing B, how will I do that? Well, I'll have to take a representative from here and a representative from here, add them together in the initial ring, and then get the answer. But there's only one representative in each of these now, okay? So you'll just have to use the representative A, you'll have to use use the representative B, you'll add those together in the original ring to get some A plus B, and you'll take the coset that contains that, but that will be in a coset on its own. So let's say it's down here, let's say this is the coset of A plus B, and it will be in a coset on its own, okay? So I hope what you can understand here is that actually 
addition is going to be identical to the initial ring. We are not actually doing anything. We're just putting boxes around the elements effectively, but we haven't actually changed how addition is going to work at all. And the same is going to be true for multiplication. If you want to multiply two cosets together, it's just exactly the same as multiplying the elements that are in each of those cosets together. So in fact, all you effectively do is draw a box around each element, call this a coset rather than an element now, but you've actually got the exact same algebraic structure here, so I hope you can appreciate that if I take a ring and quotient it out by the zero ideal, what I'll end up with is isomorphic to the initial ring, or you could say it's just equal to the entire ring, but the algebraic structure is exactly the same. Okay, all you have done is stuck each one of the elements into a coset now, but Apart from that, uh, that minor change in the concept of what each element actually is, the addition and the multiplication is identical. So you've only changed what you are thinking of the elements as representing. Okay, you've effectively just changed the symbol or the name for each element. You haven't actually changed anything about the algebraic structure. So either you can say it's equal to the initial ring R or it's isomorphic to the ring R. It's certainly isomorphic, really. The, you know, the isomorphism is so obvious that you're just sending each element to the coset that contains it that you will get away with saying that they're equal to one another. Okay, right. Uh, now let's think about this one. Uh, this is the polar opposite. Okay, so we're now going to quotient our commutative ring here out by the uh, unit ideal. So now let's draw a picture once again. So here is my uh, ring here, and I'll colour my ring once again in orange. And we're now using the ideal, which is the unit ideal. And this is the exact opposite. The unit ideal is the entire ring. Okay, so everything is now going to be in our our ideal. This is our ideal. So the partition is complete. It already completely covers the entire ring. So you're not going to partition uh, the ring up at all much. You're just going to get a single subset, and that's the trivial subset, the improper subset, which is the entire ring. So here's your unit ideal. Okay, so here's how you've partitioned up the set. You've partitioned it into one subset. You haven't really done anything. Okay, and now this coset uh, or equivalence class or residue or whatever you want to call it, that is the one element now in our quotient ring here. Okay, so how is it going to be added together? So this, uh, how can I say it? We can call it, if you like, the equivalence class containing zero. So we could call it zero bar effectively. Okay, and now uh, the addition and multiplication here are going to be really trivial because there's only one element in this set now. Okay, so addition all you're going to be able to do is add zero bar to zero bar, and unsurprisingly, the answer you'll get will be zero bar, because you just take a representative from here, take a representative from here, add them together, and unsurprisingly, you end up with something back in here, okay? And multiplication is exactly the same. So multiplication, the only multiplication you can do is multiplying zero bar by zero bar, and again, you'll take any representatives you like. When you multiply them together, you will get something that's back in the ring, so you will get something that's back in this zero bar coset. Okay, so hopefully you can see that this is a very trivial ring, a very special ring. Uh, it's actually equal to the zero ring. So when you quotient a commutative ring out by the unit ideal, you will get the zero ring, or at least you'll get something that's isomorphic to the zero ring that has the same algebraic structure as the zero ring. Okay, so those are two ideals that exist in any ring, and you can always quotient your ring out by those two ideals, and this is what you'll get. You'll get trivial things. You'll either get the entire ring back again, or you'll get the zero ring. Okay, so uh, we'll have a, another break here now, and in the next video we'll tackle something uh, more difficult, which is the first isomorphism theorem of rings.